Hey, Wes here. Let's talk about the Codrone EDU's controller, which is this right here. It's the main piece of hardware that you'll use to communicate with the drone, whether you're piloting the drone or programming it. We'll cover four main things. The controller's features, how to fly, the various display screens, and the settings menu. There's a lot to cover, so hang tight. Let's start off by walking through the controller itself. The first thing is the antenna located here. For the best signal connectivity, we recommend extending it fully and pointing it in the direction of the drone. The micro USB port is located here, which is how you'll be connecting the controller to your computer for coding. The LCD screen is located here, which will display a bunch of useful information. It's programmable, so you can also draw or display whatever you want on it and use it to view the various displays. That'll be covered in our programming lessons. The joysticks are used for flying, and you have the trim buttons here for trimming the drone when you notice drift in the drone's hovering. This is covered in another video. L1 is used for taking off, landing, and changing the speed of the drone. R1 is used for changing the LED color of the drone and controller, and also for flipping. The H button is used to toggle the backlight on and off, and also used for the return home feature during flight for bringing the drone back to where it took off. Clicking and holding S will get you to the settings screen. The P button is used for pairing. And you can also use the S and P buttons to switch the display screens, which is covered later in this video. And finally, this is the power button. The controller can either be powered by plugging it into a power source like a computer or an external battery, or by using two AA batteries. Let's start by powering on the controller by pressing and holding it for three seconds. Before we take off, let's first check if the controller and drone are paired by using the R1 button to make sure it changes the light color of both the controller and the drone. If the colors aren't changing together, just head over to our pairing video that covers how to do that. Now, before we take off, get very familiar with how to emergency stop. To do that, it'll be L1 and down on the left joystick like this. This will shut off the motors of the drone so the drone will drop immediately. It works during piloting and during coding. No matter what the drone is doing, it'll shut off the drone mid-flight. This is especially useful for if you're trying to stop the drone from flying too far. Practice it a few times and make sure to memorize it. It'll definitely come in handy. All right, now that you're familiar with emergency stop, let's take off. Press and hold L1 and you should hear a chime. The drone's propeller should start spinning and then it should take off to about one meter above the ground from where it started. You can also do a quick takeoff by pressing both joysticks diagonally down and in, like this. Once the propeller starts spinning, just throttle up and you'll take off. This method for taking off is much faster than the L1 method. It's useful for if you want to take off very quickly. Now that you're hovering, you can move the drone around with the joysticks. The following are the controls in mode 2, which is the default, the standard controls for many drones. You can tell which mode you're in by the M2 indicated on the screen. The left joystick controls the throttle and yaw. Push the joystick up and down to move the drone up and down. Push the joystick left and right to turn the drone left and right. The right joystick controls the drone's roll and pitch. Push the joystick up and down to move the drone forward and backward. Push the joystick left and right to move the drone left and right. Remember to use the emergency stop command if you lose control of the drone. You can press the L1 button to change the speed of the drone. The speed is indicated on the screen in the top left. S1 is 30% speed, S2 is 70% speed, and S3 is 100% speed. You can use the R1 button to have the drone flip. Press and hold R1 until you hear a chime, then use the right joystick and press in the direction you want to flip. Just remember, keep an eye on the battery since you'll need at least 50% battery to perform a flip. If you don't have enough battery percentage, the drone just won't flip. During flight, you can press and hold H to use the return home feature. The drone will try to fly in a straight line back to where you first took off. Finally, you can use L1 to land. Press and hold it to do a soft landing. 
or you can use the emergency stop for a quicker landing. Awesome, now you know most of the basics of drone piloting. On your controller's LCD screen, you'll notice that there are a bunch of sensor displays. The default one shows the bottom sensor height, the propeller rotations per minute, the drone's heading, pitch, and roll. In the top left, you can also see the control setting, headless mode on or off, the mode setting, and the speed. We'll go over what these mean in the settings menu. In the top right, you can see your signal strength, the drone battery level, and the controller battery level. You can switch between several different displays using the S and P buttons. These other displays are additional layouts that show the same sensors in different ways and additional sensors. For example, this display shows the HSV values of the front and rear color sensors, which stands for hue, saturation, and value. This display shows a simple pitch, yaw, roll, and the height layout. This display shows your X and Y position in meters from where you took off, this one shows your signal strength. This one shows your drone and controller firmware. And this display shows your total flight time and account of your takeoffs, landings, and accidents. You can add more displays to the screen in the settings, which we'll cover next. To access the settings on the controller, just press and hold S. Here you'll be able to change a bunch of different settings. In display, you can add or remove displays on the LCD screen, which we just covered. Just scroll through them and you can use R1 to toggle showing them or hiding them. The light menu lets you change the drone and controller LED colors. In control, you can choose between attitude control and position control. Position is the default. This setting only applies to when you're piloting the drone with the controller. In attitude control, the drone doesn't use the optical flow sensor on the bottom of the drone to stabilize its flight. The movement can be a little more dynamic and responsive, but also less stable. In position control, the drone uses the optical flow sensor to stabilize its flight. It tends to be more stable, but less dynamic. You can tell which control setting you're using by the A or P in the top left corner. For Cotron EDU, manual is the same as attitude mode. The mode menu lets you change between control modes. In mode 1, the left joystick controls pitch and yaw, and the right joystick controls throttle and roll. Mode 2 is the default. The left joystick controls the throttle and yaw, and the right joystick controls pitch and roll. In mode 3, the left joystick controls throttle and roll, and the right joystick controls pitch and yaw. Mode 4 is just mode 2, but with the joysticks swapped. The left joystick controls pitch and roll, and the right joystick controls throttle and yaw. The mode you're in is indicated by the M located in the top left of the screen. With quiet mode, you can turn the controller's beeps on and off. This is useful for larger classrooms where you might not want to have every controller beeping with each input. You can tell whether quiet mode is on by the audio icon on the screen in the middle. The headless setting lets you turn headless mode on and off. Normally when the drone takes off, forward is just where the front of the drone is pointing. Headless mode means that when you take off, the direction that the drone is pointing is always forward. So whether you've rotated left or right, the direction the drone was facing when it took off is always forward. It takes some getting used to, but headless mode means you don't need to keep track of which direction the drone is facing after it takes off. You can tell which setting you're in by the N or H in the top left. Speed just lets you change the speed of the drone. It's the same as just pressing L1 during piloting the drone. You can tell what your speed is by the S1, 2, or 3 in the top left corner of the screen. FHSS stands for Frequency Hopping Spread Spectrum, which is just a way for the signals to try to improve signal connectivity by changing frequencies rapidly. In the context of the Codron EDU, you won't need to use this feature. Function lets you do a few things like resetting sensors, starting the pairing process, and resetting everything to default. Finally, information lets you view a bunch of sensor information specs such as your takeoff count, accident count, trim, etc. 
The controller is also a great way to get familiar with what kind of information your drone sensors are able to pick up and what kinds of data it keeps track of. Whenever you're ready to learn about coding, you'll be able to access all this sensor data to gather information and make decisions. The LCD screen and the buttons are also fully programmable, so you can totally create your own controls and draw whatever you want on the LCD screen. I know that was a lot. The main thing to focus on with the controller is just getting used to flying the drone with it. Just practice piloting and flying will become second nature in no time. Happy flying out there!